One other thing just to mention in making the decision one way or the other about leaving horses in the barn or putting them outside in the event of a disaster, certainly one thing to consider is, uh, I don't want to call it necessarily a floodplain, but where you set. Obviously, if your barn is in an area that's going to get water, if we have a hurricane, everybody's going to get water whether you normally get a lot in a flood or not. But one thing to certainly consider is if your barn does flood and you've left your horses in the barn, they have nowhere to go to try to escape that water versus if they were outside and hopefully could find higher ground and evade the water or get in a place long enough till somebody could get to them and hopefully get them out of that situation for you. But so that's, that's another thing certainly to consider in the decision whether to leave them in or leave them out of your barn. Um, if you do again, whether they're in or out, these are some things we kind of need to think about as far as how do we prepare these horses uh, if we're going to leave them here? Certainly, a lot of, again, the literature that you read suggests that we go ahead and put cotton or leather halters on these horses, uh, not one of the nylon ones. The great advantage to the nylon halter certainly is that it's very strong, it's very sturdy. You know, they can all break, but it's certainly a little more sturdy in the sense than a cotton, a cotton halter and or a leather halter if an animal were to get hung up in one of those the chances of them being able to, I guess, break that halter and get loose are a little better if they're in a cotton halter or a leather halter. Some other things to certainly consider, and I again would recommend putting one of those two halters on those horses, whether you leave them in the stalls or turn them out in your pastures, either one. But some things you can do in addition to that halter, some suggestions have been to take luggage tags or ID tags, write your pertinent information on that ID tag, attach it to the halter, down where it's not going to interfere with the horse in any way or method or things like that. Also, another thing you can do with that is to take identifying papers of your horse against these same papers you've got in your evacuation kit that ID them, things like that. Put them in a Ziploc bag. It'll be watertight, hopefully, and tape it around, fold it around tightly on the cheek piece of the halter and tape it with some clear plastic tape. Again, there's information there in case when something like this happened, your horse got out of your property, was running down the road, got into somebody else's property, again, it would help them identify this animal and hopefully get them back to you since it's got all that information in it. Certainly anything that we can do to identify these horses, that if we're leaving them at home, you know, the better off we are. A lot of different methods, certainly. There's the freeze branding technique that we've seen in a lot of different places, certainly that that's a good way to identify the horse. There's lip tattoos, there's freeze branding tattoos under manes, there's microchipping, a lot of different methods of permanent identification. Some others that will help in the forms of IDing your horse that aren't necessarily permanent, but one suggestion was we do have, a lot of times they're called broodmare neck bands. If you're a horse person, you'll probably know what that means, but basically it's a neck band that would go around the horse's neck with an identifying number. Also, again, you can tape that information inside that plastic bag around the neck band. They also make some what they call ID fetlock bands, which go around the front feet, excuse me, the fetlock on the front legs of horses that have, again, places for information, your name, things like that. That's another thing to kind of consider. Uh, some other suggestions that have been made, again, that'll help folks is, again, taking a luggage tag with all the information on it, and I'm not talking one of the big ones, you know, that we all use, but one that's of relatively small size and actually braiding it into the hair of the horse's tail or the horse's mane. That again, if the halter's lost or torn off, if this luggage tag is in the mane or the tail, it's another way certainly you can identify the horse in the event that they are gone from somewhere else. One other thing that's kind of, I won't say it's a new idea, but certainly taking a permanent marker and even on horses with black hooves, you can actually write on that horse's hooves with this permanent marker, your name, your address, things like that. Again, you know, if they stood in water a really long time, I don't know how long it would be there, but it's certainly another good idea. One thing that they've suggested is another form of identification to help folks. Uh, and again, keeping in mind, we're in a disaster here. This is not something we might do on a normal basis, but if your horse does have a little bit of a hair coat, taking a pair of small animal clippers clipping a phone number in your horse's neck and things like, and I know that might sound a little extreme to a lot of folks, but it's that horse can be visually seen from somewhere and someone can make out a phone number that's been clipped in his hair coat, they can tell who to call. So again, I mean, that might be a little extreme for some folks, but 
keeping in mind, just remember, we're in a situation where you could be hours away from your animal and not even have the ability to get back to them. So we certainly want folks to be able to take care of them in the best manner they can and certainly get a hold of you to say, look, take it, you know, be fine. It's okay. Calm down. Your horses are in good shape. We got them. We fed them. We found all your instructions. Get home when you can. We got you covered.